Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be solving some harder trigonometric equations. If you haven't already done so, I'd highly recommend watching my two other videos, one on solving trigonometric equations and the other one on trigonometric identities. This video is going to build upon concepts in both of those videos, so if you don't know how to do those, you will find this one very, very difficult. As usual, there are some exam questions in this video's description that you may want to try afterwards. Let's start by looking at this equation here. We're going to solve it for theta values between 0 and 360, and that includes both 0 and 360. Our general strategy for questions like this is to move all of the terms to the left-hand side, so that the right-hand side equals 0. At the moment, on the right-hand side we have tan theta, so we'll subtract that from both sides. If we subtract it from the left-hand side, we end up with tan squared theta minus tan theta, and if we subtract it from the right-hand side, well tan theta take away tan theta is 0. Now that we have all terms on the left and 0 on the right, we're going to factorise. Both of these terms have tan theta in them, so we're going to factorise out tan theta. So we've got tan theta and a bracket, and this is going to equal 0. Now what goes inside the bracket? To get tan squared theta, you times tan theta by itself, so we need a tan theta. And to get negative tan theta, we need to times tan theta by negative 1. So we end up with this. Now here we have two things that are multiplied together that give you 0. So at least one of them must be 0. So we can write two equations from this. Firstly, tan theta here, that could be 0. So tan theta equals 0. Or the bracket could be 0. So tan theta minus 1 here, that could be 0. The second of these equations can be rearranged a little bit. If we add 1 to both sides, we end up with tan theta equals 1. So we've managed to turn this complicated equation into two relatively straightforward equations that you should already be able to solve. We've got tan theta equals 0 and tan theta equals 1. Let's just solve both of those in the usual way. First of all, we'll do inverse tan of 0, which is 0. And for the second equation, we'll do inverse tan of 1, which is 45 degrees. Now we need to use the graph to find the remaining solutions. So let's draw the graph of y equals tan theta. It would look like this. And we'll start with the one where it equals 0. So we draw a horizontal line at 0. And you can see there are three solutions here, one that we already have, which is 0, but also 180 and 360. So we write those solutions down as well. Now what about when tan theta was equal to 1? Well, we draw a horizontal line at 1. And we can see there are two solutions this time. One of those we already have, that's this one here, 45 degrees. And to get the second one for tan graphs, we add 180. So 45 plus 180 is going to give you 225 degrees. So the other solution here is 225 degrees. So all together for this equation, there are actually five solutions, three from the left equation and two from the right equation. We would usually write all of these out in ascending order. So theta could be any of these numbers, 0, 45, 180, 225, or 360 degrees. For this equation, we're going to use the exact same strategy. So we're going to get all terms on the left-hand side and then factorize. So to do this, we need to subtract sine theta from both sides. If we subtract it from the left, we get 4 sine cubed theta minus sine theta, and if we subtract it from the right, the right-hand side will just be 0. This time we're going to factorise out sine theta. So we get sine theta with a bracket, and it's going to equal 0. We just need to work out what goes in the bracket. To get 4 sine cubed theta, we need to multiply sine theta by 4, and by sine squared theta. And to get the negative sine theta, we just multiply by a negative 1. Now we have it factorised again, we can see that either sine theta here must be equal to 0, or the whole bracket here must be equal to 0. So 4 sine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. We can rearrange the second one a little bit. If we add 1 to both sides, we get 4 sine squared theta equals 1. And then if we divide both sides by 4, we get sine squared theta on the left equals 1 quarter. And finally, if we square root both sides, square rooting the left-hand side will just give you sine theta, and square rooting the right hand side will give you two values, plus or minus one half. So for this one we actually end up with three equations we need to solve. We've got sine theta equals zero, but also sine theta equals a half, and sine theta equals negative a half. So we're going to solve all of these to get the solutions. We'll start by doing inverse sine of zero, which is zero, and then we'll do inverse sine of one half, which is 30 degrees, and inverse sine of negative a half which is negative 30 degrees. And now we look at the graph to find the remaining solutions. So let's look at the graph of y equals sine theta, which looks like this. 
And we'll start with sine theta equals zero. So if we draw a horizontal line at zero here, you can see there are three solutions. We've already got the one at zero, but we also need 180 again and 360 again. Now let's move on to sine theta equals one half. So we draw a horizontal line at one half, and there are two solutions this time. We already have one of those, that's this one here, 30 degrees, and we need the other one. We use the symmetry of the graph to do 180 take away 30, which is 150. So the other solution is 150 degrees. And now we move on to sine theta equals negative one half. So if we draw a line at negative one half down here, you can see the two solutions we want on the right. Unfortunately, we don't have those. We have negative 30, which is this one here. Now, if we use the symmetry of the graph, we can find the other solution on the far left here is negative 150. And if we add 360 to both of these solutions, we'll get the two solutions on the right. So let's add 360 to both of these, and you'll end up at 210 degrees and 330 degrees. So let's replace that negative 30, since it's outside of the range that we want, with 210 degrees, and 330 degrees. So altogether for this one, we actually have seven solutions. We have zero degrees, 30 degrees, 150, 180, 210, 330, and 360 degrees. This next question's a little bit harder again. We're going to use the same tactic. We're going to get all terms on the left-hand side and factorize. So on the right, we have two tan theta plus three, so we're going to subtract that from both sides. If we subtract it from the left, we get tan squared theta minus 2 tan theta minus 3. And if we subtract it from the right, you guessed it, we get 0. Now we're going to factorise this left-hand side, but this one's a little bit harder. It looks a little bit like we've got a quadratic here. And in fact, we do, it's just in disguise. So what we're going to do is use a substitution. We're going to imagine that x equals tan theta. In which case, tan squared theta is just the same as x squared and negative two tan theta is the same as negative two x, and then we have negative three equals zero. So we've changed this question into a usual quadratic that you'll be more comfortable with. This one factorizes quite nicely. It's x take three, x plus one equals zero. Now, if this one factorizes, the trigonometric one must also factorize in the same way. Remember, we wrote down that x was equal to tan theta. So we can replace the x in the brackets that are factorized with tan thetas. So instead of x take away three, it's tan theta take away three, and instead of x plus one, it's tan theta plus one, and this equals zero. You may prefer to write this down each time, but eventually you will become more comfortable with factorizing these straight away. So now that we have it factorized, we can see there are two parts to the solution. We either have the first bracket equal to zero, so tan theta minus three equals zero, or the second part, so tan theta plus one equals zero. We can rearrange both of these for the left one, we'll add three to both sides. This will give us tan theta equals three. And for the right one, we subtract one from both sides. So tan theta equals negative one. We can find some solutions by doing inverse tan. So if we do inverse tan of three, we end up with 71.6 degrees and inverse tan of negative one gives you negative 45 degrees, which isn't in our range, unfortunately. Now I'm not going to draw the graph this time. You should already be comfortable now with finding the remaining solutions. For tan graphs, we just add 180. So if we do 71.6 plus 180, we'll get the other solution here, 251.6. And for the right equation, negative 45 plus 180, that gives you 135, which is in our range, and you can add 180 to that again. So 135, add 180, gives you 315. Those are all of your solutions, and that equation's now solved. Sometimes we need to use identities to help us solve equations. For this equation here, I'm going to start by dividing both sides by cos theta. On the left, I'll have three sine theta divided by cos theta, and on the right, the cos thetas will cancel, leaving me with just four. I'm then going to divide both sides by three. So on the left, the three will cancel, so sine theta over cos theta, and on the right, it will be four over three. Now, why have I done this? Well, sine theta over cos theta is equal to tan theta. That's an identity that you would have seen in the identities video so we can replace that with tan theta. Now we have a really straightforward equation to solve. We do inverse tan of four over three, which gives you 53.1 degrees. And to get the second solution, since it's tan again, we just add 180. So you get 233.1 degrees, and that's that equation solved. Now, sometimes the identities are not so straightforward. So take this question. We haven't actually been asked to solve anything yet. We've just been asked to show that this is true. So we'll start with the left-hand side of the identity, four sine squared theta plus three, and we're going to try and end up with the right-hand side. 
What I'm going to do is change the sine squared theta into one minus cos squared theta. So I've got four lots of one minus cos squared theta plus three. If I expand this bracket, four times one is four, and four times negative cos squared theta is negative four cos squared theta, and then plus three. You can then collect up the four and the three to make seven. So it's seven minus four cos squared theta, which is what we needed to show. Now, sometimes you'll have this as a part A to a question, and then you'll have a follow up part B that looks something like this. Hence, solve this equation. Now, if you look carefully at the equation we've been asked to solve, and then you compare that to the identity, you'll see the right hand sides are the same. This means we can replace the right hand side of our equation with the left hand side of the identity up here. So instead of writing 7 minus 4 cos squared theta, I'm going to write 4 sine squared theta plus 3. Like this. The advantage here is that we've now got an equation that only has signs in it. So I'm going to get all of the terms on the same side, this time I'm going to go for the right hand side, so I'll subtract 7 sine theta from both sides. If I subtract it from the left I get 0, and if I subtract it from the right we get 4 sine squared theta minus 7 sine theta plus 3. This is another quadratic that we can factorise. So if we factorise this one we end up with 4 sine theta minus 3 and sine theta minus 1. Now we just set each of the brackets equal to 0, so the first one, 4 sine theta minus 3 equals 0, and the second one, sine theta minus 1 equals 0. For the left one we add 3 to both sides, that gives you 4 sine theta equals 3, and then divide by 4, so sine theta equals 3 quarters. And for the right one we just add 1 to both sides, so sine theta equals 1. So we end up with two equations to solve, sine theta equals 3 quarters and sine theta equals 1. For the left one we can do inverse sine of 3 quarters, which is 48.6 degrees, and to get the other solution with the symmetry of the graph we'd subtract that from 180, this is 131.4 degrees. And for the other one, if you think of the graph you should know there's only one solution to this, if you do inverse sine of 1, it's 90 degrees. So there are three solutions to this equation, and here they are. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, remember there are some exam questions in this video's description that you can try now, check out the video I think you should watch next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.